Hey folks, how you doing? Good to see you again. Hey Darius. Let's see who is lurking around. Man, I've had some problems getting this for set up for this one. I will regale rage at you soon. Hello! Uh, Kaki and uh, CC Mark and Darius and Electrical Skateboard. Um, and Kamatrixum and MMACL. And Sorted August and Tum Dum and Ooglestraxi. Good to see all you folks. Okay, um, so what I wanted to do this evening um, was to add game pad support and to um, ha start adding audio. Now, I got. I originally thought that Linux was going to be uh, my issue, but I managed to get a dual audio output coming out of that. And then the PBR rocket that I, or HDR rocket that I'm using for uh, capturing the damn thing, that was working okay, but for some reason OBS isn't liking the audio from that. So until I get that fixed, I mean, I thought everything was working, so I'm like really chill before the stream, and then I did one test recording, and yeah, it sucked. So we haven't got that today. Um, so we'll, we will do the controller stuff, which should just take us a few minutes, to be honest, and we'll start adding things to the API. Um, for handling controller stuff. At the moment, we're still... Oh, let me jump over to the right. Hey, Infinisil, how you doing? Um, we've still got our little um, shooter that we had before and the silly names that are being spawned and things like that. So for those of you, because I think I saw a few new names in here, um, what we're up to at the moment, there was a, a, a I guess, engine called uh, Div Game Studio from years back, which I played with when I was a kid. And it was really fun because you wrote every um, thing as separate main loops. So basically you define these actors and they had their own loops and you could define their own states and things like this. And I wanted to do something along that lines where, and taking it a bit further, like everything only knows about things relative to itself. It has no idea of its own world position, for example. It can only get positions relative to other things. Um, so we're gradually working on that API and we've been messing around with this also, if it's just your first time tuning in, you'll notice we're doing this all in Lisp. Uh, my main project that I've been doing before messing around with making this has been making bindings um, over OpenGL um, in Lisp. So we can do things like, where is the rendering code? Do we have that somewhere handy? Uh, let's see in Draw Actor. Yes, up here. So we can see that we have um, things that look like regular Lisp functions, except for this hyphen G on the end. That means it's GPU code. We cross-compile Lisp into GLSL. Um, you then compose those functions into pipelines using def pipeline, and then you're able to map a stream of vertices over that pipeline, passing in uniforms and stuff like that. So it's all, it's all Lisped up, and we just decided we were going to play with this idea. So... This is the this is the code for what's currently on the screen. Um, we have bullets which just move forward until they're either touching an alien or are off screen, um, at which point they die. Um, we have some aliens that are strafing backwards and forwards in a rather naff way. We've got um, and when they run out of health, so if, if they're touching a bullet, they remove they decrement their health, and when the health is obviously less than zero, they die. Or less than equal to zero. Um, it was just one of those things when I was learning, when I was a kid, it was just really cool to be able to just say, like, the bullet's whole behavior was just move forward. And then when you hit something, delete yourself. Really liked that. Um, we've also last week put some stupid names on things. Because um, it turned out it was quite nice. Oops, let me just say continue. It was quite nice to be able to just refer to things by name. So we can say, uh, hey, John. Uh, and we get the ship, and then we can say as the ship, because uh, the whole API is written in terms of the thing that's currently updating, um, you can say uh, move forward to. And that's one problem, actually, that we of things we broke last week, which actually should be what we fix first, um, is that we can see here move forward. Running things from the REPL isn't seeming to work anymore. We changed how our internal state was modeled uh, for these actors. So what I think is happening. So let's actually have a quick look at that. Uh, let's inspect. Hey, John. 
Um, what we have is we have um, we have current public state and next public state. These objects mirror each other. We update one of them and then we swap all of them at once. This allows us to update all of the actors in lockstep. So we run through updating them all and then we switch all of their states. And so it's just double buffered state. Um, and I guess when we're running the code from the REPL is just after we've already done the swap. So we're modifying um, we're, we're modifying the wrong state object, I think is what is happening. Um, and so I just need to work out what the best way to attack that is. I think all we really need to do is go and move the function which updates the REPL um, into the right place in our update. So we can do that by, at the moment it's wrapped up in this little helper macro. So we're going to expand that because we don't need its help anymore. Um, so let's do this and do a bit of cleanup. So it has a frame counter and a few things like this. And this step function is being called which is actually just calling step engine. So we'll just do that. We can remove this. We will temporarily stop what we're doing over here. Um, let's have a look what we're doing daft. Stop. And let's go and have a look at this. So it's interesting that it's def var from the frame counter because that means it's not going to get reset just by recompiling that, which is fine, actually. Um, okay, so this isn't exactly pretty, but we could always clean this up later. The bit we're looking for is this part here, update REPL link. Um, so I think we can just take this and um, we actually don't need this program here anymore. We've got the do, so we can just do this. We'll go to update actors and then in here somewhere so we can probably do it what's this this is the rotate which is swapping the state so if we just paste this before there and restart again all right so let's get rid of these guys everything still seems to be working on that front which is good come on Let's go down here and see if we can do this again. So as John move forward 20. Yeah, that's working now. Cool. So it was just a case of when we're running those things. Um, also got to call myself out because the end of last week, uh, partway through last week, I was completely full of shit. I had a function called turn towards. And actually, let's just recreate the issue because... That would be helpful. I'm just going to set this to 400 because we don't need many aliens at the moment. And I'm going to... Um, let's add this dead shuttle. We'll say spawn. Um, actor kind is... Whoops. Dead shuttle. And the position is going to be... Let's just put it at 0, 0.50. Interesting. Now, I think because of when we're running the, uh, huh, because of when we're running the REPL stuff now, we're actually hitting, we don't need a particular hack we had before. That is odd. Okay, let's have a look. Um, spawn into this guy. So now the question is, do I want to... Yeah. How do I want to do this? Let's look in spawn. Current actors. If we spawn now into next actors and do this and say spawn shuttle. Let's look at our current actors. Just make sure I'm not crazy. No, there's a ship, there's an alien, and there's God. So if we spawn a dead shuttle now. Now it appears. Okay. But that basically means our spawn into hack isn't necessary. So we could go and remove that. 
which would be much nicer because I never felt happy with that. Clean up time. Hey, love like Semtex, good to see you, man. Unfortunately, we're not able to do the audio stuff today because OBS and my capture device are fighting with each other, uh, which is really sucky because I was so ready to do that. Uh, but we are going to get um, a couple of bugs fixed and then game controller support in for sure. Let's leave that there for a minute. Okay, so... Spawn into... Interesting. Okay, so there still might be a case for this. Is when we step engine and before we update the actors... Hmm, I wouldn't have expected that to be a problem. This is when we're running the, the tasks for the next frame. This is interesting. So we're saying one of the tasks might be to spawn another actor? Okay, that might be worth looking into before we just try and rip this code out, because I don't really want to recreate an old bug. Um, so... Let's look at the thing I was full of shit about, which was turn towards. So we do as Hey John, instead of move forward, we're going to turn towards um, that dead ship. Actually, what was that thing's name? It'd be nice to just have a function to give us the names, but um, dead shuffle is called Gilbert. So we'll do turn towards uh, Hey Gilbert. And turn towards by 20 degrees. And we see that we're turning right, we're turning right, and then we turn straight past it. At which point I said something along the lines of, Oh, this is to do with how we update state and blah, 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 blah. Complete crap. Because clearly the frames are updating, so we're going through that whole process of swapping state every frame. I don't know what I was talking about. Um, and if I had just kept going with this, I would have seen that it turns around to about here. And then it settles that way. And the reason it's doing that is it's rotating clockwise. The, the function we're using in turn towards is rotating clockwise instead of anti-clockwise, which is wrong. Well, it's not, not wrong necessarily. It's in, inconsistent with the rest of our API. So all of our 3D um, stuff is right-handed matrices so far. And so the default has been rotate is counterclockwise. Um, and the 2D stuff, I've just kept the same thing because, I mean, you have to pick one clockwise or counterclockwise, so I picked counterclockwise. This one I've done inter incorrectly, so we're going to have to go and fix that. So, um, which function was the problem? Um, good question. I think it was from angle. Um, so we give it an angle in radians, um, 45, yes. Okay, so what this is doing is it is rotating, um, oh, where's my doodle devices? I haven't got those set up yet either. Come on, e-shell, um, grommet, mpx, there we are. Hopefully everything comes back to life. Yes, so what essentially is happening, so we have a vector, um, zero, one. And we're rotating it by 45 degrees. If it was anti-clockwise, it would go to here. Um, and this would be negative, but it's positive, which means it has gone here. And that is not consistent with the rest of the API. So we can just go and fix that. And we're going to do it in a very lazy way by just negating the angle. Um, Whoops, and this is because I need to say it's the common lisp negate, not the other negate that's defined in this file because that's the vector to negate. So now if we do turn towards, we can see he's starting to turn back in the right direction. Let's speed this guy up 20 at a time. And then he's starting to vibrate just around there. So that was that problem. Um, and seeing as that's a new function, I'm still not 100% on whether this whole anti-clockwise for the Vector 2 stuff is a good idea. It feels a bit bleh. But it could be consistent, but there are other problems as well. It's... I, I want to hear comments on that, to be honest. Feel free to shout out. Um, uh, 
and that is pushed. Okay, so that was that problem. Um, what was else was going wrong? I said there was we had broken um, updating of state, which was interesting. I want to know how exactly I've done that. I want proof. Proof. Right. Um, where should we go for that? We should go back to the test stuff. Because um, I'm not sure how exactly I've... Why I was so convinced I had broken state. I left this message in the readme to myself. Um, and I'm not sure why. So when we expand the macro, we can see that we have um, the public state as the only bit that gets swapped. And that, at the moment, only holds things like position and rotation. Uh, the private state we don't worry about because, again, the reason we're protecting the state is so we can update and lockstep. And if other things can't see the state, then there's no need to worry about it. So um, start time and fire and all that kind of stuff, which are here. Um, Yeah, this looks like this was our thing that went and updated all the existing actors. This looks like it creates a new stepper, which is correct. And it doesn't create a new start time, which is also correct. Um, there's some part of this that's a bit weird, though, because if this only is updating the things that... Of course, this only updates things that we've said update, but something needs to set the initial start time. Um, so where does that happen? Oh, it happens in, in actor, which is the correct place for that to happen. So perfect. Yeah, I have no problems with this. I'm guessing it was um, a side effect of one of the other things that I was seeing that I was thinking internal state was broken. Blah! Okay, right. Game, support, game pad support. Let's get that in. Ah. So, ages ago when we were working on um, lots of different effects and things like this, we had a project called Play With Verts. And inside there, in the main file, we had these comments. And I think this is actually all we need um, to get this working. So if I just go to daft, which is our main file here with our main loop and everything, and paste, Okay, so there is a project that I made called the SDL2 Game Controller DB. Um, that is needs to be quick loaded, which is the first thing that needs to be done. So let's QL quick load this guy. Um, let's also, seeing as we're going to need it all the time now, I'm going to throw it into our project. Save. And... We want to open the game controller on SDL2. This is a um, target specific thing. We need to initialize the game controller. So I'm just going to stick this here for now. And this is SDL2 pad uh, zero. Let's just call it SDL2 pads. If this is something we need to terminate later, then I'd rather we just keep a, keep a log of these things. Um, how should we do this? Farm in it pads. Um, IDs, which is going to be a list. Let's make an array here. So, what do I want to do here? Let's just do. It's never going to be more than 10 pads, for example. SDL2 pads is still nil because this should be def parameter. And now we can change it back to def var. Okay, so we've got some arrays there. It would have been nice actually if this was. Let's change it to def parameter so we're finished modifying it. Um, the initial elements is going to be nil on all of those. Cool. So we're going to say loop for id in ids. Do and then we say unless there's already something set up in that um, array for this pad ID, 
then we're going to go and set it to that. So set this to be this. And the reason we're doing this slightly roundabout way is because we're going to be stopping and starting this project a bunch of times. We don't want to go and call this um, game controller open every single time we just pause and restart the game. Oh, I like that strafing still working properly. Locally based stuff. That's cool. All right. So what now? Well, now we need to call init pads. Um, we'll do that up here. In fact, we could just put this. Now nah, let's let's take it all and move it up. Init pads, and for now we're just going to worry about one of them. So. All that palaver was just for that. And we'll call this ourselves. Actually, um, it would be nice to... Hmm. No, this is fine. This is fine. Let's just call init pads. And then if we look at SDL2 pads, we can see that there is one game controller set up in there. That's great. Um... We'll worry about all that stuff later. What was the last thing we needed to do? Oh yeah, enable background joystick events. Fine. And I don't really care if this gets called a bunch of times. It's not going to hurt us to do that. And just call it from the REPL since we're already here. Okay, so there should be a controller around here somewhere. A little PS3 controller, that will do. Let's see if we can get any sense of this. I should already have, because we're using a library I wrote ages ago called Skitter, which should have gamepad support. I mean, we've used it before. Um, let's just see if we can throw something in here to prove whether it's working or not. So as a print, um, gamepad, what gamepad methods are there? Functions rather, gamepad 2D, there we go. Input source is gonna be um, gamepad zero. Well, zero is the default, so just gamepad and the index is going to be zero so that is going to be we have actually let's bring that up again because it's not super clear what i'm talking about here if i do gamepad you can see that uh, some of the functions have got a gamepad 1d 2d button and button a which i have no idea what that's for i'll have to go check in a minute okay so we have um, our normal buttons our 1ds are um these triggers here and our 2Ds are joysticks here. So this should give us one of those. So now we're gonna start getting loads of input. And then hopefully if we move this, we get Zeta! Lovely, cool. So, let's remove that print since we're happy that that is working. And we need to think about um, our API as far as our actors go because one of the things we've kind of decided was that um, actors don't know about much they don't they only know about themselves and what they can kind of intuit from their surroundings like whether they're colliding with something or something like this um, so what should we do What is a suitable... Oh, this is the... Let's get a look at the actor API here. Right. Don't even think spawn should be in here, but never mind. Um, oh, came back button A is this. Oh, that's that's interesting. That was just a dummy method when we were... Oh, that's from when we were sketching out the API a while ago. Um, Love like Semtex says button analog question mark? What do you mean, sir? Um, if there's analog button support, those will be under 1D. Um, oh, but no, button analog as in, yeah, like what happens when you click? They'll be down as normal buttons. I'm not sure which buttons. We'd have to find out, actually. Um, that, um, game controller, easy now. Um, where is it? SDL to game controller database. That project is pretty simple. Um, it just has loads of definitions of different controllers stashed away. So this is, we can actually pass these and from that map out, um, 
what each of the buttons map to. Strange, actually. I thought I would have done this. Um, no, I guess I didn't need to. I just needed to push it into SDL. Could make that a little better. It's probably a Chimera, actually, that's done that stuff. Um, let's have a think. So, yes, that exists. Distracted myself again. Yeah, so how do we do something with gamepads from the our actor's point of view without giving them any global information? Because we can't say um, gets... They can't set their own angle in, according to the world because as far as the actor's concerned, they're facing forwards. They have no real concept of angle, only relative to other things. But I think we could have a set angle by... Um, by joystick and yeah we could have something like that I'm not sure I need a decent name for this function but uh, set angle um, from joystick Ugh, from pad from analog yeah and this is gamepad, so it feels like I should have gamepad in there as well, which is just nightmarish to type. Um, let's go with this for a second and see what we can do. And we have like, I assume we'd want to be able to specify um, gamepad ID and um, analog ID. And let's just, let's start with that. Let's start with that and see what happens. And then we'll say angle from, um, ooh, interesting. Angle from here to, I guess, whatever was coming back from the gamepad. What did we have just a second ago? Where's our print? There we go. Let's do that. We can set the rotation of self. Again, rotation was one of the things that we've we've put this percentage here just to kind of indicate to ourselves while we're coding this that this is a hidden thing and it's not something we should be exposing to public. It's just a little convention thing. We it doesn't mean anything deeper than that. Uh, self was spelled incorrectly. Gamepad ID is never used, which is correct. So gamepad ID and analog ID. We could just make these optional as well. We could actually have analog ID first and have that be non-optional and then the gamepad ID second. Because it's most likely when people are starting out that they're ju it's just them on their computer and all they want to do is get some, detail some data from the analog sticks. So maybe. Ethan B. Morgan. Afternoon, Jesus. Hello, my child. Oh, yeah, I've actually got a bit of news for you, folks. Um, so I moved over to Norway quite a while ago now. Um, I originally popped over to see a friend of mine, this chap called Johnny, and we had made games together when we were in school. And uh, I went off uh, traveling, lived in a couple of places, and did some things, tried out uni for a bit. Didn't do me. Um... And have gone one direction in life winding up here he had gone into the game industry and done things over there and he's been working on a project for a while uh called tailspire and now that i'm actually wanting to speak about something important the connection is being a bit janky just uh let me know if um the uh connection's being a bit weird um yes um yeah, so um, I originally popped over after... I'd known him for like 10, 11 years, and I popped over to finally meet him. When that happened, we were making some stuff in Unity. He was working at a startup called Outtrax, which was later Fuse. Um, and they offered me a job, and that's how I came to move over here in the first place. Now, a few years on, Johnny started up the games company we talked about when we were kids. So I'm going to be leaving Fuse, and I'm going to be moving on to... Hey, Johnny, speak of the devil! Um, I'm going to be leaving Fuse and I'm going to be moving to 
Bouncy Rock, and we are going to make a game called Tailspire. Uh, you're going to hear more about this from me over time on these streams. Um, it's not written in Lisp before the uh, <laughs> before the uh, pitchforks come out. Um, no, Unity-based game, but um, yeah, it, it's really exciting um, for those who know me from the Fuse side. And you haven't seen me on the streams for a while. That's kind of why, because again, like I had been mulling this over in my head, and it felt disingenuous to get on the stream and go Bruh! about something I was thinking about leaving. Uh, Fuse has been fucking amazing. I cannot stress enough how, like, it has been. I have spent four years where I've been happy to go to work every day, and I've worked enough years before that to know how rare that is. It's been so good. And I've got, so I've got my two months or so left. We're working, we've got to work that bit out uh, while I work my notice. It, it, it's been amazing. And worked with the smartest people I've ever worked with. It's phenomenal. And I wish them all the best. But this is too good a story to turn down. So I'm going to go and make games for a while. That shouldn't have any major impact on streaming. And my goals for Keppel this year were on stability and testing. So it shouldn't change any um, of the goals of feature-wise, what I was intending to be releasing. Um, so, from your point of view, you should notice nothing other than I'm like, oh my god, you should see this game! So yes, that's my bit of news. Don't know why I left it till now to say it. I think it was Ethan B. Morgan that actually reminded me. It says, move to Wales. No. <laughs> I got out of the UK. I'm not going back. Darius, not in Lisp? No. Uh, I'm still very much of the mind. If, if, you're tr if your goal... If your real burning desire is to make a game, then use an engine. Like, get it out. Like, the game is what you should be caring about. And unless the game requires Lisp for some reason, or requires some specific technology, then you're doing the wrong thing by focusing on that technology. Make the game. So yes, that's very much what we're doing. Um... Kaki's saying you could use Closure CLR with Unity, but don't tell anyone. That's a really cool project. I um I reached out to that guy one time and then totally went silent on him. But um yeah, really, really awesome thing. I don't believe in functional programming for computer games, to be honest. Um, I mean, ah, let me rephrase that before I just burn my own audience down. Having pure functions is awesome, and the more of your uh, code base that has that is better. Um, but it can't come over the goals of performance. If a game runs too slow, it's not a game anymore. It's just a really shitty slideshow. So you can't have that. So everything's about delivering the experience. Everything else comes second. <laughs> so our job is to convert Johnny to Lisp. No. <laughs> Gotta get things done. Um... Ethan P. Morgan, I think because I was, uh, think I always ask about Fuse, that's probably why. And I love it, man. I, again, like, can't stress enough how fucking cool that place is. Just the, the, the way I've described it to members of, my fa members of my family is it's a place where if you stand still and listen anywhere in the office, you will hear something that makes you smarter. And I've had that for four years. It's been so good. So good. But now I get to be an apprentice at doing the games thing, which is super cool. Um, so yes, I will talk about that more in the future. But let's get this uh, dude moving around. Set angle from analog. And someone pointed out that this was probably the exception rather than the rule. <laughs> Stop trying to hypnotize my employer. Um, right. Kaki, while you may, uh, may occasionally want... The direction uh, go in the pad direction. I think that's an exception rather than rule. I agree. I very much agree. But it feels like it's some. It's a good place to start, and it's something that we'd want around. Um, also, uh, shout out to. Oh yeah, so I've seen as uh, Michael saying, "Tail Spire looks awesome." Yes, it does. Johnny's really good at this, and so is Jason and everyone else who's been touching that so far. It's very cool. Uh, let's drop a link in here. Um, come on, fingers. What are we doing? They've got Lisp in them at the moment, and I can't. Boom! There you go. Have that in the chat. Not distract you for a few seconds while I fuck up this code. Okay, where am I? Get rid of this unnecessary thing. 
Oh no, I actually opened that up for a reason. I was going to go here. And where is our ship gone? There he is. Um, <laughs> right. We are going to kill the strafing for a minute and we're going to set the angle. Whoops. Set angle from analog. Let's see if we do this, what happens. Um, oh. Holy shit. Well, that just works. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get rid of this gamepad button A nonsense. But we can say have gamepad button... Um, what is the... Does this function already exist? That's the thing. I think it does. Yes. So we can't really call it that. Um, maybe we can just use it as is. That's the kind of thing. Which of the functions from Skidder do I dress up in a nice, in like, in comfortable clothes and say, hey, it's part of this API, and which do I just expose? Um... I'm just going to call this pad button for now, and we're going to say, and, uh, we, oh, okay, so we're going to have button ID is one of the things that gets passed in, and optionally a um, pad ID. We're going to have to start normalizing the terminology around this at some point. Um, but this is just a nice way to feel it out. And all we're going to do is do game pad button which is the skitter function which takes an input source which is gamepad zero actually this api is nice enough that we can just expose it and just add the things like this that yeah let's just have you pass in the gamepad and the default is gamepad with no arguments gamepad zero yeah and then this is just gamepad so this should still be working, yes. And down here, we don't pass in a pad ID. We pass in gamepad. Uh, no, we're not going to do that either because we don't need to. We're just going to use the API as is. So what we should be able to do now is to uh, replace this mouse left thing. Or we can say or. Or the mouse button. Gamepad button. Gamepad. It would be nice for that to be optional there. Um, index is zero. So hopefully now I can control this. As, <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about. Right. That's fucking awesome. Um, and now we just we've got to add we've got to add the uh, trigger for flying though we've got to have some thrust in there as well um, Mackle is saying on functional programming not being suitable for games try telling that to John Carmack he thinks otherwise he definitely agrees with reducing um, the like maximizing the amount of your code base which is functional um, he's also talked about in that same talk talked about that if you got the amount of objects you were garbage collecting down to a very small controlled number um, then you could have GC in games and it'd be okay um, yes he's again he's one of the people Tim Sweeney's another guy that's talked about functional programming in games um, but he's what they haven't said is that it should be pure functional programming the whole lot all the way I haven't seen that claim um, in any of the videos that I've watched uh, with functional with people from game industry talking about functional programming um, again you can be sure that the oculus um, drivers are not pure functional but there are really awesome things you can do, and I have a um, data. I have a project which I'm brewing at the moment, and I will show when it starts to uh, take some shape of how to do um, large amounts of data processing with SIMD in Lisp 
uh, with much more granular GC um, so that you could technically use it for games. And I want to be able to be doing like hundreds of thousands of like at least 50,000 objects in a scene at a given time being updated constantly outside of Lisp's GC, um, but still being managed memory. Yeah, there's some things we can do there for real, and it's really, really good fun project. Um, but it's it's in the design phase. It's been a design phase for probably about a year. It's been like something that pops up in my head and I'd work a bit on. And there's progress, there's progress, and I'll yell about it when it works, but uh, not before. So, yeah, we've got to get triggers in. Let's, um... Actually, let's add... What should we add in here? Um... Can we just can we just say print gamepad one d input source is gamepad uh, index is zero. Which one is that? Is that the right one or is that the left one? Left. One. I want the right one. So one. Yep. There we go. <laughs> this was silly ah of course when I let go the angle that's interesting so we need a dead zone um, <laughs> we also need uh, some actual velocity and stuff like this that we can but you know not the worst thing in the world. Fuck off. There we go. Uh, Sword of Dogga says OpenCL can be useful for that. Certainly can. Uh, as can... What's Intel's project? IFPC? They've got a shaders for SIMD kind of thing. Um, TSE Mark says our core MMO engine is mostly functional-ish. Each active object in the task is not but all of the other objects are immutable so basically an in-memory optimized local locked database yes yes i'm very much of uh very much swaying to some of that model i I'm... that's very exciting to hear i'd love to actually hear more about that um how you guys do that um yeah that's sweet CSE Mark, this is all in C sharp. For a while, it was fully functional, but it, turn, it turns out turning off the functional bit for some changes and then turning it back on, it's nice and performant. Yeah, totally. There's uh, definitely places you can you can get away with that. Oh man, that's it's so cool. I don't get super distracted on this. Um, <laughs> um, I just want a quick way of getting a summary of. I suppose current actors does give me a summary of what we've got here. Why are there still bullets around? That's worrying. Where are they? Oh, they fucked off miles away. Interesting. Oh, I know why. I know exactly why. It's because our uh, off... We haven't actually written the off-screen check properly yet. Um... We will get to that. Probably not today, though. We won't bother with that. Jesus, we're not even at nine yet. We've got ages. Oh, dear. So, let's... Uh... Actually, yeah, let's, uh, let's let that reset every time we recompile. Oh, maybe not. I don't know what to do with this. Actually, no. It's just a velocity. Oh, actually, no. So how are we going to do this? Oh, it's, we're just tinkering around. Forget proper and just do something. Um, hackity hack. Yep. Um, wait a second. 
something weirds going on here. Say, recompile that and say continue. Okay, so value blah 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 is not of type number. Mining two arg multiply. It's saying that the speed is a vector three. How dare you? Where did that come from? Oh shit, I know what that is. Um, that's because move forward is leaking lies about us. So move forward um, is returning the new position, which internally is a vector three because we want to use Z for depth. And um, yeah, that's also leaking the actual uh, world position as well, which we really don't want. So, I guess we return nil or distance. I don't like that. We'll just return nil for now. Turn left as well. It's incrementing rotation. Ugh. These are mutations and they should be treated as such. Uh, turn towards. Strafe towards. Move towards. Set of speed is and speed multiplied by something to slow it down, add by whatever the gamepad is times something. Uh, we still haven't done um, our time step stuff, and we will in time. Um, we are going to have to earn fuck this guy now, but we should be able to do that fairly easily by looking at speed is now zero. Okay, so maybe we can just say continue. <laughs> okay. These shitty factors. Whoa, fuck a duck. As <laughs> hey John. Uh, set of the position to be Oof, didn't like that either. Did I just type that wrong? Yep, continue. Oh, actually, we can just do this. Seems we're bashing on this state anyway. Um, yeah, I know. I'm typing the wrong thing. Oh, no, it does need to use... Okay. It's still a bit too fiddly to, to do this. We need another way of just... Hammering on this really easily. Oh, there we go. Come back. <laughs> I've got to add that dead zone. This let's move it down here, and in the time while it's scooting up to the top of the screen, I'll fix it. Um, yeah, let's <laughs> let's set the friction a little higher. Okay. Are we gonna get him back now? Oh, screw it. Where's the zoom? We've got to have a zoom around here somewhere. Actually, that's a good point. Where is the zoom set? <laughs> Actors. Draw. I didn't actually look at where the drawing things were. Size. I think that might be the... Let's just have a look at what value that is. Nope. Um... Oh, screen height. That's what we were using. We were just saying screen height. Um, 
Start off screen height and game units. It was 600? Okay, so let's do 1,000. You are right, of course. Continue. But our guy's way too far away for this now, so let's just go and get him. I'm going to zoom out a bit further, though, so we can tweak this without having to do this too many times. 3,000. Okay. So now when we accelerate... Oh, it's too fast. We could stick a max speed on that as well. Um, where are we? Ship speed. Max speed. 30. Do we have a clamp for float? No, we just use max, don't we? Uh, no, min. Min of uh, whatever this result is. And max speed. Won't help us if we start going in reverse really fast, though, of course. Um, so we should have a clamp. There should be a clamp around here. Oh, yeah. Good. It was in my max code. Cool. Um, Alright, min is zero, max is whatever the max speed is, and our value is there. And it's freaking out! Because this is very typed code. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a bummer actually, because the maths library I wrote is, a, is now a broken game controller. Nice. Um, maths library I wrote has statically typed all of the functions which is great for capital and most of the stuff I do, but not so friendly for this thing. Um, this is one of those places where you want uh, it to just dynamically cast everything and assume that the user's just playing around. Because these kind of fixes are naff. Nobody wants to be doing this. Not when they're doing these kind of playing. What's been going on with chat? Sorry, I've been ignoring you for a while. Um, uh, Weblo, yeah, come back mentioned you can get a lot of benefits for using some functional programmers. Sorry, I think I already read your one. Um, so as many function um, as we can are trivially functional, which is gorgeous. Yeah, that sounds great. No need for the whole thing to be functional. Not impossible to make this. Uh, the, yeah, to make while thing immutable. Yeah, I mean. Wow, the connection is really just dying the death today. Is this is this still okay for you guys? I, I just saw it drop down to the kind of low 2000s and 1000s for a second there. Look at this, we're all agreeing. What's going on in here? CSE Mark, I'm waiting the scars to prove it. I wish folks would get over the uh, paren hatred. You can build such nice DLs, TSLs, trivial list makes everything else so much nicer. Yeah, man, it's uh, <laughs> it's one of those things. I, I I don't um I don't want to bitch on people that don't like it too much, but I think there's a certain group of people who don't like it who just haven't stuck with it any length of time. It's like when you it's like when you start out with Haskell or something like that. That language feels like just like a head fuck or prologue or something. Like it's tricky at first you know and it's not because it's bad it's just has a certain design yeah this uh i love that the, the speed is maintained while doing a 180 that's just hilarious oh dear It's a good point, actually, in this system where we've had people. So, hmm. Oh, I, I'm, my head's jumping all over the fucking place at the moment. Right. Let's set the max speed down to. Let's actually just look at the speed. For a second while we scoot around. Yeah, that's already too fast, and it was, like, in the low 20s. Come back. 
Um, so our max speed, let's just set it for 10 for now. And take this down a bit more. And then bring this guy back. Here we go. There we go. So, we can take that print out. Where are you? There we are. Clear this, set the thing to be 600. Shit, <laughs> kind of like it being a bit further out now. Um, yeah. But one of the problems is that, oh yeah, we've got to add that dead space in as well. Um, well, that really should be in the gamepad API. Maybe that should just be built in anyway. Just be able to define dead zones. Um, I might make variants of these functions just called pad 1D and pad 2D, which have the implicit gamepad and do a few extra things that we like for this. Um, like being a bit softer on types and stuff like that. Um, so we've got our dude. Uh, where are we? We're traveling in a certain direction, whatever. I mean, as far as the ship is concerned, it's traveling just forward at a certain speed. Um, but because we aren't, like, let's say we wanted to do straight up kind of, um, we want to be able to push in a certain direction, we want to travel in that way, and then we want to turn around, we want to carry on traveling in that direction um, until we apply thrust to push in the other way. Classic Newtonian kind of shitty flight stuff. Um, but that's a little trickier than it should be in this, because um, all of the directions that you're aware of are relative to yourself. And so then suddenly you have to manage... Uh, if you have a vector which is saying which direction your velocity is, um, you have to rotate that vector velocity as you rotate yourself. <laughs> which is a bit pants. And it, like, it, so doing this thing which was meant to simplify stuff has added complexity to another area. Who knew you can move complexity around rather than getting rid of it? Um, yeah. So, I don't know what the best way to do that. I mean, obviously, the cop-out way is to do like we do it with position and rotation. Um, we promote it into something that the engine engine already defines, and um, you can interact with it that way. So you have velocity and stuff like that built in, and you just... Um, You just say accelerate in a direction rather than move. Accelerate forward rather than move forward. It's easy to add. It's easy to add. That's uh, I guess that is the benefit. And again, that's one less thing for the person to implement. And if it's common enough, then maybe it's worth it. I don't know. It feels janky though. I mean, like... You're going to want to control that pretty tightly in almost anything that you do, so I'm not, not sure. Not sure. Uh, CSE Mark, do you use any of the... Um compile time generation stuff for C-sharp working on the ASTs and stuff like that to give yourself kind of macros or do you just uh, use use vanilla I was wondering because there's the um, there's some folks who do an alternate com entity component system for Unity that do a lot of the uh, compile time generation stuff and pretty cool CC Mark <laughs> says haha I do that's awesome um yeah, that's not something I've got in my code in our code base at work, but uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I just love being able to do that stuff. 
Though finding languages with really good macro systems, I want to take a look at Idris one day. Because they just, because of all the dependently typed stuff, they've got code running, compile time, runtime, all over the fucking shop. It's super interesting sounding. CC Mark saying, I generate my serialization code so it's super, super fast. Yes! Yes! Love it. Cool. Okay, so we're an hour in, and I'm... Okay, so... I'm feeling like we're running back into a place where we're getting into the design space again, which is no bad thing. Um, I'm going to remove this strafe line, because now we've got gamepad support. Fuck everything else. Um, so there's two kind of prongs of design here. We've got some API design from a... making this stuff better. Um, and then there's... And then there's some API design stuff of what things are inherent to an actor. Um, so one of the goals for the next Lisp game jam is I'm going to be using whatever we've made by them to do a Bomberman, a Bomberman clone. Jesus, I can't speak. Why am I still wearing these headphones? I put on these headphones because we were doing audio today. The audio doesn't work. I don't need this. What am I doing? Um, just having hot ears. Um... And so for the Bomberman stuff, I'm actually going to have all of the tiles, every single tile be an actor as well. Um, actually, that's something we could start looking at, is some of the optimizing, some of the rendering stuff. Because at the moment, things are going to get very slow. We've got a separate draw call for everything on every actor we load, which is bullshit. Anyway, back, back to um, the other thing. What I want to do is have um, tiles be actors as well. And all it's going to do is it's going to look, and if you don't have any body... Um, then you're just a static tile, or you're a static actor. And these ones um, don't need to be updated every frame, and are batched did differently for drawing. Um, yeah, basically it's just going to reduce the cost, so we can afford to use actors for everything. Because I really don't want to add things other than actors in this. Um, okay, so what are we going to do? We've got rendering stuff we can look at, which would be kind of cool. And... Yeah, could do that. Hmm. Rendering stuff we can look at, and what was the other one? Oh, I've forgotten now. Relax, have a coffee, look at the chat. Um, Darius is saying, so he just noticed after one hour. Oh, yes, yes, the headphones. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a quick boy. <laughs> You can, you can feel sorry for Johnny. He's the one who's going to gonna have to work with me. I just realized there's some stuff on my head. <laughs> just quality people you're getting there, man. Quality people. Uh, so this stuff... Oh, let's just make a list. Um, to do. To do. Um, so we've got to have static actors, uh, we need to have um, more consistent uh, API, actor API, which is pretty much the same thing. Uh, we need to expand the API, we need to think about um, world space I guess values this thing about velocity and things like this um, want to move to instance rendering and yeah that's probably it That's a, that's a few things we can start with. I kind of want to have a look at this today because it just sounds like fun. We've got an hour. May as well may as, may as well have a look. Let's set up a test that kind of sucks. And then we'll... Oh, what the, the first thing we should do, actually, seeing as things are kind of working right now, is commit some stuff. Oh, that was the other thing. Completely forgot. Animation. 
We want to actually have some animated sprites. And I even got some sprites ready. Uh, this is from another project that uh, my partner and I are working on. Um, and I really wanted to do, again, make the animation stuff as simple as possible, which was just regular tile layout. You specify the size of one tile, and it works out, obviously, how many there are. Um, and then it just cycles through them, and we can start designing the API for doing that. Um, actually, that could be kind of fun, too. What do you guys want to see? Should we go into some of the rendering stuff, or should we try and look at um, a bit of animation and try and work out that part of the API? Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to run and grab a coffee. And you can ponder amongst yourselves. So I'll hit the pause button. Let's do this. Get over here. Back in a second. Yo, we're back. Darius said animation sounds good. Well, then Darius has decided for you all. Let's have a quick look over here. Nice. Right, let's uh let's do a bit of that. So what we'll do is we'll fuck around with the dead shuffle. So let's change this to Arfi walking. Alright, so there he is. Um, let's get rid of the doodles we have from earlier. And you know what? I think we're going to go and remove this spawning ship stuff for now. Yeah, it's just common out this line. And... Let's just kill these guys because we don't need them for a bit. All right, so currently the design of the engine to make things as simple as possible was that we would use the pixels to determine the size of the objects, um, the pixel size. So now we want to, what we actually want to do is we want to say how many tiles in both directions there are, and then we can just divide the size by that. And yeah, that's, that's I guess, is the first place to start. Um, tile dimensions, tile, what do we want to call this? Tile count, and it's in two dimensional numbers. So in this case, it's four by four. Um, I mean, this is going to be a floating point vector. I don't know, which we should actually do is just pass in a list. Tile count, like this. Um, let's go into the fine actor and start hacking on this macro again. Again, if this is a bit too small for some people to read, let me know. Um, Hey, there's a sprite size thing already. No way. And we just ignore it. So, okay. We um, we don't need that anymore. We're going to swap this out for um, tile count. Uh, 
and we're going to take tile count. We are going to see. Do we want to? We can just do a bit of order magic here. We can just say we're never going to evaluate this. So you should just pass in a list of um, the dimensions. That would be fine. Sorted August is saying this will create issues if you ever have a sprite take more space in its cell than another. Yes. So um, that's just going to be a limitation for now, I think, is that the, the size of the sprite stays constant, even if you make yourself smaller or bigger. Um, one of the things I want to do is have... Um, is to on one of these episodes to revisit the collision system and try and do something using the fragment shader and do like pixel perfect collision there um, i need to look in some of the techniques and just see how that's done in general um basically i want to do collision on the gpu because that sounds fun yeah so if we take tile count and we're just gonna, yeah, let's just add some state for it. So tile count init form is the quoted tile count. And we're gonna do a couple of asserts here, which we'll have to turn into a nicer thing later. Uh, we assert that this is a list. Um, tile count is a list. And when tile count is anything, um, oh no, yeah, what should we do? Because someone might just want to say it's four. There's four and it's just a row of... They might just have made a kind of one row of these and they've got no going down. Um, so it would be quite nice actually to just say... Um, if number p tile count, um, then list one tile count. No, that way around. Um, and otherwise, let's move this up here. Let tile count be this, otherwise it's itself. And then we're gonna assert that it is a list and the length of tile count is two. Here should be enough to save ourselves from problems for a short amount of time then tile count is tile count and then if so if we were to do this and expand it we would see that tile count is four one yes of course because i was just doing this example we want four by four so tile count is going to be four by four that's in there that can change every time we recompile that's all right. Tile count isn't something that's going to be observed from outside the object, or it, and it isn't going to be changed by the object itself. Um, so let's go with that. Let's just say that that's okay for now. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I never did. Um, I got distracted by the fact that there were sprites in here and didn't <laughs> didn't commit anything. Okay, so. Um, Let's not commit these changes because they're not relevant. Let's commit th these changes because these are fun. These are the ones that have the ship moving around by gamepad. Um, the define actor stuff. We won't commit the tile count things. This is all changed because of changing the indentation there. Hey, list people, um, is there any diffing mode or like um, what do they call it diffing profile or something that you can set in git where it uses the structure of the parens and diffing like can like, i think you can have xml diffs for example and it will do structure aware diffing is there anything like that for lisp because that'd be really cool i would get lo a lot smaller change sets um i think would i maybe not Right, let's do this. This is the pad stuff. This is the game controller. This is the next actus change. This is the API tweaks and moving the update REPL. Nice, yes, and to-do list. 
Gamepad support and API tweaks. Okay, so now we've got our um, tile count stuff. We should also just anim length is in it form um, reduce multiply the tile count list because we're going to need this length all the time um, and we also want anim frame to be zero to start with. And so then we're going to need to modify the macro. So basically in the update, how do we want to do this? How do we want our animation API to look? Do we want to set, like, do we want to, do we want to explicitly say next frame? I suppose we could start there, couldn't we? Well, that would be the simplest place to start is just like the user calls next frame and we move to the next frame. There's also some issues we're going to run into now that, um, Before we were basing a lot of things on the visual, we hacked in lots of stuff just based on the size of the visual. That is going to be broken now because our the whole visual is now going to be much bigger, and we're just going to be taking a tile at a time. So let's rep around to see what we've got, um, and it'll be to do with resolutions. So let's just do res. Okay, so radius. This was what we were using in the collisions. So basically, we actually need to calculate the size now. And also, we're inheriting from actor, and it feels like these things should really live on there. Um, the actual definitions of them anyway. They can be overloaded by this class, but we should have them here somewhere. What would it actually be? Would the default be one zero? I guess it would. One one? I guess you never actually have zero, can you? Unless you had no visual, so that's no good. Animation length is obviously gonna be one. Okay, so I think that's where we want those to be. Again, because it's Lisp, for those who haven't hung around before, that's updated all the current instances, so they all have these slots now. Um, Yeah, let's start with just next next frame. So let's stick that in the API because that's going to be very easy to add. So we can just go defun next frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to go set f. Let's get the slots of this guy. So we're going to get the anim frame and the anim length of self and we'll set the anim frame to be mod um oh, i hate that wait a second uh anim frame plus one mod by the anim length that should be right right that should be okay so if we go and look at our current, what am I doing? Inspect, let's inspect the ship. Where is he? What am I doing? Inspect value, hey John, there we go. You can see that it's on frame zero, its length is one. Um, so if we do as, hey John, next frame, you can see that we haven't changed anything over here, which is correct. It's just going to be wrapping around all the time. Nice. 
Um, it's okay for us to return the frame in this case. This is some state that we are going to allow the user to know about. Um, Darius says, so there is a magic diff refine hunk, which you can set to all. I will have a look at that after the stream because that sounds very interesting. Magic diff refine hunk. Okay, nice. I can't quite work out the behavior in my head, but that does sound interesting. The tile count is one by one, which is correct for this guy. Um, and, oh, actually, while we're here, let's look at our current actors. So Gilbert is the one we should have a look at. So inspect a Gilbert. Man, I'm starting to get tired. What happened? Okay, so this one's tile count is one by one at the moment. So I guess that's because we haven't gone and updated dead ship. Let's try that now. Dead shuttle. Recompile. Oh, problems. Cool. During the macro expansion. It's asserts are fucked. Oh, dear. Oh, that's because I've been doing this in the wrong... Ooh. Got a couple of problems here. Let's start by looking at this error. The assertion failed. Because, come on, this is the assertion, and what we provided was nil, which is, you know, correct. That is that is what we did. So let's go back to that macro, which is here, yeah, macro. Oh, not here. Actors. Um, Where's the oh yeah, of course we move this to a separate file. Define actor. When you don't specify a tile size or tile count rather, we should give you a default. So if this, then or the tile count or one by one. So now when we do this, it should work. Yes, tile count is one by one. Um, we can recompile that and it's complaining. Undefined variable tile count. That means we probably have an unquoted something in here. So tile count, yes, we can see the reduce here. That should have been run at compile time. Which it should now be. Anim length is now one. Yes, that is correct. Let's recompile that again. Now we've got no warnings. Excellent. Um, then we do not need um, bullet to have the animation. We need this bit to have it. So we can compile this. And now if we go and inspect Gilbert again, we should see that ah, our tile count is still this. That's interesting. That's a good point, actually, because this is one of the values that we want to update um, each time we recompile. So we can set the init form in the class, but unless the um, this default behavior, unless that slot is added or removed, it's not going to recompute this. It's going to use what it currently has. So um, that's not changing, even though we're specifying a new init form. So we need to reinitialize this. We've got this update all existing actors thing down here. Where we push in visual. Um, ah, again, this is, this is hacky, but it'll do for now. Uh, new tile count. Do this. Complains it's not being used. Yep. T 
tile count to be new tile count and anim length to be new length and now do we want to reset the animation frame every time we recompile seems fairly reasonable um Oh no, we could do the same logic as we do elsewhere. If we like when we had states, we just say if there isn't a state available that matches the name of the current state, then just reset it to the default state. Um, we can do the same here. We can just say um, set if oops, anim frame um, is going to be if. Anim frame is less than new length, then leave it as it is, otherwise set it to zero. And then we just need to add tile count anim length and anim frame to our width slots. Let's just bring this down like this. Okay, we compile this. Let's see what happens. <laughs> what do we get now? Um, recompile this and it hasn't blown up, which is nice. Look at Gilbert and we have a four by four tile count and we have an anim length, which is 16, anim frame is zero, good. So we also need to work out the calculate a new size. So the um, actor is now going to have to have a rect size or something like that. We'll just call it size. Um, def class actor and have size. Um, Yep, and this is going to be, well, we can't really give this an initial form. We're gonna to have to set this. We'll just set, um, oof. We'll set it to this string. This means if, if it hasn't been initialized properly by our macro and all that kind of stuff, then we're going to get this string being passed to some math. And then we're going to go, what the fuck? Who's passing a string to these math functions? And we'll Google it and we'll go out. Oh, Google it, we'll grep it and we'll find it. And we'll just say, ah, oh, it's us. We're idiots. That'll work. Size not known. Um, so we really need to find where we work with the visual. So visual init form is load text. That's interesting. So we actually do that there. I'm surprised. I mean, it'll work. It'll totally work. But I think I'm going to set this value down here. In the initialize actor and on the update all existing actors. So let's do this. Let's do slot value of um, self size is going to be uh, the size of the visual. So the resolution resolution of the visual as it currently is. Um, why are we using with slots here? Let's just do with slots. Visual and size, so. Take the resolution of the visual, and then we're going to just divide it by um, a vector made out of the size. No, the tile size, tile count, that's it. Now there's a few things to check here. Um, 
Ah, oh, yes, yeah, so the visual itself is a sampler, so we're going to need to get the texture out of the sampler. Also, I want to know how I've been using this elsewhere. Um, That's funny. There we go. Uh, this is perfect. Cool. So we'll take the tile count. We turn that into a vector two. We do this. We get the sampler. We get the the texture from the sampler that is the visual. We get the resolution of that. We divide that by the tile count in both dimensions. That should give us our new size. We set the size. We also need to do this whenever we update the visual, which is down here. Um, wait a second. Update all existing actors, takes a visual, it sets the visual, and so then we also have to update the size. That might work. Holy cow! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Pop a pimp! Great news, man! Second child born yesterday! That's a fantastic excuse! Congratulations! And yes, you are late. <laughs> it's weird not seeing you from the beginning of the stream. That's just kind of, it's like unsettling. It makes, when, when there's a, like a, the core people, when people from the core gang aren't in the stream, I start thinking I've got the day wrong because I trust you guys far more than I trust myself. Um, CSC Mark saying, question for the chat. Have any of you tried to use Iron Scheme and how did you like it? Oh, that's yeah, that's very interesting. I'd like to know the answer to that. Um, <laughs> Phil Fogg saying, yay, Lisper regrowth. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, uh, Pondipin believes in functional coding. Uh, so, and he wanted to change himself, really. He, but he but he couldn't, so he had to make a new human, and uh, all of the new state will be applied to that. Um, AV, okay. <laughs> thanks for telling the audio videos. Okay, that'll be a real shitter if I found out now. Oh yeah, no sound the whole time. Actually, the AV's not been okay, and that's part of the problem for the stream. I wanted to do um, audio this time, but um, everything works except for some reason the uh, audio capture from the rocket into OBS. The audio capture in the Rocket's own software is fine. It's it's all fucking working. It's just not into OBS. Pissing me off. Anyway, we don't need to go back into that again. Let's do this some more. So, um, what else? What else do we want to know? So, now, instead of... Right, step back, Chris. Think about some things and... We only need to do seven things at a time, okay? So let's just recompile this. And nothing breaks so far. That's awesome. Let's go and look at Gilbert and see what we've got. We've got a size which is 48 by 48, which is actually the size of one of these guys, which is really cool. Um, and we can we can double check that actually. If we go back to the REPL here, go and grab our visual, which is a sampler. Uh, we'll get the, um, actually we don't need to go and use this function, we'll just go in here and get the texture itself. It's 192 by 192. Um, so we can see already that it's, uh, yeah, that we, we've got a smaller size for the tile. Hooray! Um, so now we've got the size, we should go and recompile all the other guys and see what breaks. No! What is broken? How dare you? Sampler texture, nil. Something's cool. Oh, oh, it's calling it on God. Okay, that is a legitimate problem. You should not try and set the visuals on something that doesn't have visuals. So, um, if visual, otherwise, it's going to be zero zero. And we will skip the task and carry on. Um, we will now go and try and recompile these guys again. No warning so far. Excellent. So everyone should have um, some decent state now. If we go and expect 
the current actors array. We only need to worry about the first six. We're not going to think too much about the bullets, but actually we can have a look. Yeah, their size is 11 by 18, which looks right. Ship is 52 by 52. God has nothing. And Gilbert is 48 by 48, which is taking into account the tile count, which is good. So what next? We will need to... go look at size so rather than calculating size here we're just going to get it from with slots we should be able to remove this and hopefully nothing will change holy moly that exploded <laughs> fuck okay when attempting to read the slot value the slot size is missing from the object's public state yes it would be oh yeah damn i shouldn't be querying that from here i should be querying that from here continue Yes, nice. So now this has shrunk down to the size of one tile, but that's not entirely correct. We still need to do a little bit more. Um, we want to have uh, the value to scale our UVs by. So this is actually where, um, yeah, we really need to know what we need to know. We want to modify our UVs. We need to scale them and we need to calculate the offset. So what we really need are the, is the tile count and the tile number. We could also work this out. Actually, if we, if we calculate the UV offset and size on the CPU side, because we only need to work it out once, we don't need to do this for every single pixel. That's just a waste. So let's work out that. So first thing we need to calculate is how we scale the UVs, which is just going to be uh, one divided by uh, the tile count in both dimensions. So one divided by, and let's get the slots with slots, the actor, tile count. Oops. And I've already forgotten what the type of tile count is. It is a list. Cool. So we should, we could just get first and second, or we can actually just do destructuring bind here. Let's do destructuring bind X and Y. Um, yeah, TX and TY and say tile count. TX. Y. So that should be 1 divided by 4, uh, which is 0.25, so we can multiply by that, and that's going to get us the right scale. So let's start with this. We're actually going to return two values. Uh, for now, it will be nil. Um, values, not value. Down here, we will say multiple value bind. Um, UV, UV scale and UV offset. Um, calc UV mod, taking in the actor. We're going to have a new uniform called UV scale, which is going to take UV scale. Um, we're going to declare that we ignore um, UV offset for now. We will come back to that in a minute. And before we compile this, I would just like to go and bring this up over here and add this new UV. Uh, so, you, sorry, the new uh, uniform. So this will be UV scale, which is a vector two. And all we're gonna do is we are going to multiply the UV by the UV scale. And this is gonna cause this to screw up because currently what we're uploading is zero. So that's gone. Uh, then we'll come down here and we'll compile again and suddenly, Ship looks the same, but we're down to one of our tiles, which is great. Um, so now, now we're in a really nice place. This is great. I, I'm gonna do a quick tweak here and say 
let UV scale uh, is this and pass back UV scale. And now we're going to calculate the UV offset. And how are we going to do that? So it's going to be floor and divide, right? <laughs> 20 minutes left. Awesome. We've got plenty of time for this. Um, let's, how are we can do it? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so our x offset is going to be we're gonna we're gonna need the frame number regardless. So let's just get that while I'm not thinking properly. Oh, it's called anim frame, isn't it? And we are going to mod the anim frame by tx because let's draw this out we have whoops I feel like a teacher now I always forget one column and then I have to redo it oh my god all right so we have four by four so the x um modifier we want is going to be zero um yeah you get the idea <laughs> these guys 0 0.25 uh, 0 0.5 0 0.75 one of those um, so we want to take our anim frame and mod it by 4 which is going to give us number between yeah 0 and 3 essentially and then we're going to multiply that by um, our UV scale the X component X component of our UV scale and that gives us our X modifier and then our Y modifier should just be floor right you do no yeah you divide it by you divide it by the width and take the floor I think why is my brain not working so we we'll do 0 divided by 4 and then no you are not allowed and then take the floor of that. So frame zero is going to give us uh, row zero. Frame two is going to be row zero. Frame three is row zero. Frame four, we're down onto the next row now. Yes, this is what we want. And so we're going to times this by the Y component of our UV scale. And then we're going to wrap this all into a vector two. UV offset, boop, and UV scale is unbound. Yes, we need to use let's star, and it's complaining that UV offset is not used, which is correct. Say continue. Now we can come back down here, and we are going to use UV offset do that we're going to need to pass it in UV offset UV offset if we're going to pass it in we need a uniform for it yep we compile that that's not complaining um, so that's good and now we can do will it just be this Interesting. Let's go look at those sprites again and see what we've got. So we seem to be on row one now, which is kind of incorrect. Oh yeah, because we've done four by four. What we actually need is our anim frame and it needs to be based on the actual width, which was TX. Um, so now it's the guy facing forward. Um, and hopefully, let's go to our dead shuttle, which we're using for this dude right now. Let's just say next frame. <laughs> so.
I think this is moving too fast to see correctly, but we are spinning through the frames correctly, which is nice. Let's slow this down. Hey, you know what it could be nice to do is actually store the frame number as a float. And then you could do kind of timed animation just by adding the right... Yeah, you could add... You could add a... Ah. And I've got it in my head. I just can't speak it properly. Anyway, let's... Um... Let's just put a timer in here for a second. So we go... Uh... Step is make step up. Um, seconds every 0.3 seconds. Um, do that, and then we say when phone call step next frame. There we go. Yeah, that's right. We're we're cycling through all the animations there. Nice. Basic animation. So I think what I'd like to do first is commit it. Formula Boom says, cool animation. Thank you. That's my partner doing the pixel art. Um, Speaking Beast! Nice! Good to have you here. Wait a second. Speaking Beast? Ah, the little hat means Twitch Prime. And, um, I'm not sure... I'm sorry if I've, I've said greetings to you before, but nice to have you on the stream. I don't think I've seen you here before. Good to have you. Um... Darius said that went better than expected. Right? It did, though. Um, okay, now I want to fuck it all up because we have a few minutes left, and that is tradition. So, let's uh, go back to Actors. I love doing this without stopping the damn game. It makes me really happy. Um, right, let's go back to Define Actor, and I would like to change how... Um, Oh, come on, Chris. Words. My brain's just turned off, man. It's not having it. I was all prepared to do this, like, audio and just make everything's like, make fart noises and shit like that. And fire bullets that screamed and stuff like this. That was my whole goal for this evening. And I just was not prepared for doing real work. Okay, so anim frame. I want this to be a float. And the reason is, um, we're going to combine this with... Um, API actor. We're going to do next frame is going to be this floor anim frame plus one mod anim length. That still works. Um, we're going to just guarantee this is going to be a float. I'm actually surprised that kept working. Okay, so um, yeah, floats are fine. <laughs> we're gonna make it a float, and we were gonna we we're gonna have a thing called advance frame that takes an amount, and we're gonna increment the anim frame. No, we're gonna actually do the same thing as before. Let's do this, do this, but instead of plus one, we set the amount here. And so really, next frame is just advanced frame by one. Yeah, and we don't do floor here, so that is actually different. So let's... Uh... Advanced frame, floor. Okay, so that's working. Let's go back to our test and we can see the difference. So then rather than having this timer, where are we? Dead shuttle, there we go. I'd like to remove this 
and just say advance frame uh, by 0.1. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> I love that it does that. I didn't think about how that would look, but that's really funny. Um, and then the, is it in here? No, it's going to be in actors, draw actor here. Uh, anim frame, floor anim frame. There we go. That's roughly what I was going for. And then, so we can slow it down. We can speed it up. And because we're gonna, we'll probably have this be based on time in some way once we do some of the time step stuff. So you're advancing, you might be able to set a frame length and then advance by that amount. Yeah. Okay, so that we didn't break something, which is... <laughs> I got it. Here's Johnny from Pound of Pimp. Um, API, yes. Yes. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. Oh, wait a second, let's change that. Cool. So. Oh yeah, that's the other thing, dead zone. We didn't do the dead zone thing. Let's do that. Because we do have some minutes. Also, if anyone's got any questions or anything like that, feel free to start yelling them in the... Uh, I mean, like you weren't already. Just yell them in the chat, um, and I will address them in a couple of minutes, and then I'll sign off. We're pretty much at the end now. Gilberto has spawned. Hello, Gilberto. Fantastic. Right. Uh, gamepad. We we'll can't get a name for that later. Um, let's look at test and see what gamepad stuff we're using. Gamepad button. So we're going to do pad button. Uh, we're going to have a button ID and optional um, dead zone which is going to be say 0 0.1 and um, the other optional thing let's actually bring this down to new line um, can we do this Ugh, it just looks bad regardless um, the other optional thing is going to be the um, pad itself why am I? Don't do this. Not at the end. Gamepad zero. Gamepad button. Uh, input source is gamepad. And index is. Why have we put a dead zone on this? This doesn't need a dead zone. You muppet. Button ID. Cool. So now I can change this to button is going to be pad button we don't need to specify this anymore and that should still work yes um, then we'll do if on pad 2d um, no we won't do that yet we'll do, do pad 1d and it's the um, 1D ID and the optional gamepad, let's just leave it like that. 1D gamepad index 1D ID, yes. Go down here. Um, 
cool. What else? Um, oh yeah, so now we want to do set so angle from analog should also have a dead zone as the first optional thing. Dead zone is 0 0.1. Um, so we'll just say we'll get the 2D thing first. Let's uh, val be this, and then we'll say val. I'll we'll say when um, v2 length of val is greater than dead zone, we'll do this. So that should mean now we can point in different directions and just leave it, and they stay there pretty much. Obviously, we have issues as we let go, but um, we can do this now, which is... <laughs> a bit better. Obviously, our, our, our uh, animation speed stuff is still very janky. We can change on a dime. But that's something I'm going to think about for next time, I guess. Cool. Fuck you. We need to add death to ourselves as well. Right. Okay. Add uh, and dead zone stuff. Amazing commit message, Chris. The team will be delighted. I think that pretty much wraps us up for this week. Uh, let's just go through the last things. Da -da 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 -da. Um, Sorted August. Go. What type of game are you making? <laughs> what is this? Oh, it's Speaking Beast. Oh, Speaking Beast, Jason. Hey, dude. Nice to see you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you're shouting, Sorted August. I've clearly missed some reference, probably from uh, not reading up high enough. Um, I don't know games. <laughs> We're making an engine, man. We'll work out the games later. Um, what is your editor? No. Oh, Darius is saying, from before, this will highlight with four colors instead of two to show inline differences. Um, oh, cool. Thank you very much. I, I will I will try that after the stream. So the dogs says, congrats to Pom to Pimp. Yes, once again, sir. Congratulations. That's awesome. Next commit message should be dedicated to Pom to Pimp's child. Oh, no! Force push! Pow! That's how things get done. Right. Um, yes. But for number three, remember that um, unless you're g the one giving birth, there's no excuse to be late for the stream. <laughs> yep, I think that's it. Thank you very much, folks. And uh, I saw it in August said to yell it in chat. Very true. I brought that up on myself. Um, and we're not making any particular game at the moment. We're, we're kind of messing around with shmup, but uh, I had some sprites for some dude, so we used those for the animation. Um, brilliant. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot, folks. See you next time. Ciao. I say that, and now I need to go and stop the stream. Stop it! Yes.